Good evening. Uh, my name is Rule, and last year I decided to give up my partnership at Deloitte to become a senior fellow at Deloitte's Center for the Edge. It's our research facility that helps senior executives make sense of and profit from the cutting edge of business and technology. So in my new role, I uh, travel all over the globe, walking into boardrooms, telling them stories about how exponential technology is changing the world and their business. So I'm a storyteller, and I'm here to share one of these stories with you around sustainability and profitability. The world, uh, Aruba, is no longer an island. The world has become our island. Economic liberalization has led to the free movement of goods, people, ideas, and money all over the globe. The world is getting hyper-connected. Everything is connected and nobody's in charge. And we live in a transformational time, the information age. And information technologies are changing everything. The way we work, the way we live, the way we play, how we do business. The world is getting hyper-connected. You have the free flow of information, the democratization of media and distribution, the abilities to connect across boundaries and cultures. And that will eventually lead to a more open and liberal world. And these changes are going very fast, and we're in the midst of it. Because digital technologies uh, are developing exponentially. There's uh, much data to prove that. For example, you have uh, Moore's law that has accurately predicted for the last decades that uh, uh, computing power will double every year. Take, for example, the iPhone. The iPhone was introduced in 2007, which is not so long ago if you, if you think about it. And that iPhone, the first iPhone, had as much computing power as the guidance computer that put a man on the moon in 1967. And that same power to put a man on the moon is now in the palm of your hands. Well, that's exponential. And you literally can't imagine it because the human brain is programmed to think linear. So if I take 30 steps, how far do you think you will go? Well, about 30 meters. If I double my distance with every step I take, how far do you think you will go? About 26 times around the world. Can you imagine? Well, you can't. You literally don't see it coming. And uh, we're not sure, but we think that we are currently at the knee of the curve. And uh, that's the point where uh, the, the, the rate of change will start accelerating towards what they call the singularity. It's, it's the point of the graph that goes straight up, straight up in the air. And what that means, nobody knows. That's incomprehensible. So we refer to the technological singularity as that point in time, which is in the near future, many people say, where artificial intelligence is at a higher level than human intelligence. And what that means, nobody knows. So the future is coming towards us at an ever-increasing pace. And nobody knows what tomorrow will look like. Nobody. Not even Google or Apple. And this, this, this great uncertainty can lead to fear. So, because globalization, uh, exponentially developing technologies, are uh, increasing competition for businesses, uh, and leads to mounting performance pressure, which then leads to shortening time horizons, a, a emphasis on risk, a discounting of opportunities, basically a full focus on surviving today instead of having a long-term long vision of the future. And then we have environmentalists pointing towards scarcity, saying, today we have a given set of resources. We have an exponentially growing population. We have big problems. There's global warming, there's lack of food, there's lack of clean water. A zero-sum view of the world, uh, that we are using up all our Earth's resources until there's nothing left which then leads to more short-term thinking on businesses. I mean, I need to get to these resources before others do. So then we don't trust businesses to do the right thing, eh, that they will always value short-term profits more than long-term sustainability, then we start to regulate them, 
uh, erosion of trust, it's a vicious circle. So if we see it as two opposing values, sustainability and profitability, and we create tension between these values, and we increase that tension, we get excesses. Because profitability will then turn into greed, and sustainability will turn into tree hugging. So the question is, how can you balance and connect the two? Is it possible to achieve long-term sustainable value with short-term profits? Well, I'm convinced there is. Because these same exponential technologies can potentially lead to an age of abundance. Because the technology is there, or will soon be there, to get all the drinkable water we want out of the oceans that are surrounding us, to efficiently capture the full energy and power of the sun and the wind, to use 3D printing to make manufacturing less, less, less wasteful, to find a good alternative for fossil fuels. And that might be sooner than you think, because it's developing exponentially. So if we look into this uncertain future, you can either fear it, or you can see it as a huge opportunity. Nobody knows what the future will look like. So we can shape it. Remember, every, everything is connected. Nobody's in charge. We are all in charge. We are all responsible for the future that we are creating. So to come up with that, to come to that bright future, uh, instead of being fear, we need to let go of fear. We need to start building trust. So how do you build trust? The first building block of trust is purpose. Um, if I were to say to you that, uh, you know, I'm a thief and if I get a chance, I will steal your money, that in a very weird way builds trust. You know exactly where you are with me. <laughs> but obviously, uh, it's not a very compelling purpose, and if I articulate it to you, I will not be a very successful thief. So businesses are more and more starting to understand that they need to have a very compelling purpose. And most successful businesses do do have such a purpose. Look at Apple, uh, Think Different, or Google, making all the world's information accessible to all. Second building block of trust is transparency, because I can tell you what my purpose is, but how do you know that I will actually walk the talk? So that we require, now require businesses to not only report on their economic performance, but also on their so social and environmental impact. That definitely helps, but more importantly, in this global island, this hyper-connected world, with a free flow of information, your reputation as a business becomes key for your license to operate. And there's nowhere to hide in responsible business practices anymore. Then the last building block of trust, and a very important one, is being vulnerable, vulnerability. If you have uh, the nerve, the guts, to let your defenses down and be vulnerable, that creates a huge amount of trust. And actually, being vulnerable is not a weakness. It's a strength. Because if you can be vulnerable, that means you are resilient. If you are vulnerable, you have experiences that nobody will have. You can make mistakes. And if you're charting unknown territories as a pioneer, then things will go wrong. But making mistakes is a good thing. You learn from them. You recover to a higher level. So maybe uh, some of you in the audience are now thinking, well, Rule, this is a great story, and I can see that you are a storyteller, but you know, <laughs> trusting businesses, I think you're a little bit naive. Uh, uh, businesses will always be tempted by short-term profits and will not always do the right thing. To those people, I will say, I think you're right. They are just like children. So I would say, treat them as if they were your children. These are my children my girls, and I, I love them. I love them to death, and I trust them, and I believe in them. And I want them to give them a vision of the future that is hopeful and inspiring, that there is a world of opportunities out there, and that they can make a difference. And I don't want to over-regulate them or to be overprotective, because I want to give them the freedom to explore the world, to experience it for themselves, to find their true purpose. And their kids, so I know they will make mistakes. But making mistakes is not a bad thing. You learn from mistakes. So when they play on the beach and they put a handful of sand in their mouth, 
they will click quickly learn that it is a very uncomfortable thing to do. <laughs> and it's also good because it will build up your resilience against all kinds of diseases. <laughs> and the best way to learn that a stove is hot is to burn your fingers. But obviously they are also very vulnerable. So um, I will keep a close eye on them. I will closely supervise them. Be alert. So uh, they're free to run around on the beach, but I will closely supervise them to make sure they don't drown. <laughs> so let me give you an example that uh, pulls this all together. This uh, was the first successful hybrid car, the Toyota Prius. And boy, that was a very ugly car. I mean, it was in those days as if you had to choose between an ultimate driving experience or being environmental friendly and driving an ugly car. I think they designed that car to look hideous on purpose, because <laughs> look at me suffering for the environment. <laughs> and then came Elon Musk, basically saying, why, is the, why? Huh? why can't you have an ultimate driving experience, a cool car, uh, which is good for the environment? So what he did, he took the Lotus Elise, every boy's wet dream, got rid of the internal combustion engine, put in an electric engine, and there we have, wow, the Tesla Roadster. And that is a cool car. And an ultimate driving experience with zero emissions. And he made the whole industry, all the automobile industry follow suit. Being a big commercial success, it allowed him to build the Model S, which is basically a computer on wheels promising a future of self-driving cars, uh, less congestion and less pollution. Now, I think that is truly a pioneer, a passionate explorer in his industry, and a very successful one. Aruba is of obviously still an island, and you have the potential to be a living lab for the rest of the world, to uh, invite everybody here to experiment, innovators, businesses, to build this into a sustainable island. And done right, this will attract businesses, will attract a new class of tourism, so that you can show to the world that to create wealth is to combine values that are not easily joined, and therefore scarce, and therefore profitable. That it is perfectly possible to save the planet and make some money doing so. <laughs>